Now then, welcome to Smidge on Science with me, Smidge Manley. This time out, I've travelled all the way from Barnsley to this lovely lake, because we're going to talk about rain. Rain is magical and mysterious, and we don't quite understand it, but without it, this majestic puddle just wouldn't be here. But what is rain? How does it know when you're planning a barbecue? And how long have we got before it's all run out? These questions and more we're going to answer this time out. So join me, off we go. We can all remember a time when it's rained, but none of us understand it, no more than these ducks do. All we really know is we're getting wet. I decided the best way to get answers was by talking to a proper weather expert. So who are you then? My name is Lorenzo Locatelli, I work for the London Meteorological Office. Would you like a mint imperial? Uh, no, thank, uh, thank you. So no. we're here to learn about water and specifically rain. So what is rain? Well, as everybody knows, rain is a type of weather. It's when water falls from the sky and it right. comes from clouds up above. As everybody knows, it takes a cloud to make a rainstorm. And you can see, there. yes, and, and, and also the, the grey clouds that we can see here, which are rain clouds and they've been forming uh, all day long uh, and later on it will almost certainly rain. Right. Uh, and the, the, the clouds up there are storing up huge volumes of water, which exists as uh, moisture, water vapour, right. suspended in the Earth's atmosphere. So is it like a giant sky lake? Yes, uh, yes, in a sense, yes, I suppose it is. Uh, in the sense that there are enormous volumes of water, even as we speak, suspended right above So it. why doesn't it all fall down at once? Well, because uh, it, 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 it's, not, uh, it's not about to fall through the force of gravity. What happens is, as the temperature changes, as atmospheric pressure changes, uh, the, uh, the droplets of moisture begin to form uh, around uh, small particles, dust particles. So when it, when it falls down, we get puddles on the ground. But why don't we get puddles in the air? Well, um, well, uh, as uh, as as the droplets are uh, falling, uh, the, the, there's there's nothing for them to to, to form upon in the sky. They they, they have to uh, land before they can right. puddle right. together. So you, so you said there's this giant sky lake. Is there sort of a second sky above that that's raining down to fill it back up again? No, no. Uh, I, I mean, there, there is a lake up there in the, in the sense that there, there is a, a huge volume of water. So I suppose, metaphorically speaking, certainly there, there is right. there is something like a, a lake in the sky, but it, it doesn't, right, it doesn't exist in water yeah. in this form. It's more in the form of water vapour uh, suspended in the Earth's atmosphere. Well, that's been very useful. Thank you very much. Can I tempt you to a mint imperial? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm fine, right. but thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Matt Lorenzo seemed like a clever chap, but something he said didn't quite seem right to me. Why is it that puddles can't form in the air? Science has no known explanation to offer us, so perhaps it's down to me to figure out this one for myself. Right, well we've been to see the meteorologist and he's told us about rain coming from the giant sky lake and how that's filled up from a second sky above, raining down. But what I still don't understand is why we only get puddles on the ground. Why don't puddles form in the air? Well, we're here in my laboratory to do an experiment. I've got two test tubes here that are in the sky. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some ordinary tap water that I've made blue. To, it's, just, it's just food colouring. There's nothing fiddling going on here, ladies and gents. So I'm going to get some blue water here and I'm going to simulate rain in the sky into these test tubes. And what we're going to find out is whether or not it forms puddles. So let, here we go. Here we, oh, look at that. Look at that, it's forming puddles. Oh, let's see if it's a fluke. Let's do it again, eh? Let's do it again. It's doing it again. That's amazing. So what we've proved is that puddles can form in the air, but there must be something about this laboratory condition that's causing it to happen. Um, just to make sure we've not faffed with it somehow, I'm going to pour it out now and see if we can get ordinary ground puddles. So I'll just move my tea, hang on, there we go. So I'll pour them out and here we, oh, 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 hey, it's puddled, it has, it's puddled. So I don't, I don't know what that means. We've learned a lot about the rain in this programme. So I headed out to the garden to get back to basics, stand in the rain and have a good old think about how far we've come. 
So what have we learned about the rain? Well, we've learned it comes from a giant lake in the sky. We've learned that under careful laboratory conditions, it's possible to create puddles in the air. One day, perhaps nature will catch up with us. Science hasn't had all the answers we've needed on this programme. But I wonder, if only these little drops could tell us their own story, what wondrous things would we learn? Well, I can't stand around in the rain all day. I'm going to go inside for a cup of tea. So until next time, ta-ta. If you're enjoying all this in-depth scientific knowledge, you can click somewhere here and some more videos will come up that's full of it.